What a week to chat to John, the, the week they announced that they have splurged £1.2 billion on the rights to the Champions League and Europa League. So have you spent too much money? If I get the rights, then I've got it for a price that I'm prepared to pay. And so I don't stress at these moments. I just get myself in that state, and that was the state that we made this bid in. The Premier League, you only have a little bit of it, don't you? We've got 42 games. Right. And so that's a game every week, pretty much. And if you speak to the average viewer, not many people have the time, in fact, to watch more than one game at a weekend, actually. Um, it's going to sound like a terrible stereotype, but very few men are allowed to do that. Um, <laughs> Could you elaborate more on your partnerships around social media? What about the kind of commercialisation of that content as well, across social? We are going to show the Champions League and the Europa League finals um, this season uh, on social media. In terms of monetization. I take a really sort of balanced view of this because it, it, uh, if you look at sports that have only been on pay, uh, I think over time um, they're not nourished as a sport needs to be. I think that social media gives access to those younger viewers, so I, th I think that is important. There are benefits um, too because uh, you can um, get marketing data from getting people to register through the targeting um, that you can do of customers as well. But I think you have to regard this really as an ecosystem. And it's in my interest for people to, um, to be talking about the Champions League, to be reading about it, to care, because that's how I'll get them to pay for it ultimately. My observation is that as it's, uh, as it's developed, it really seems to have developed an editorial voice using different pundits and referees and so forth. I wondered how much of that development was uh, in the heads of you and your team. I can remember watching the big match live. The sport was part of the national conversation. There was no traffic on the streets on the FA Cup final day, um, and everybody spoke about it. And you've got a bit of that through the Olympics. And so what we were trying to do uh, on BT Sport, make sport very entertaining again and more inclusive and bring more people in. There's a lot of what you do at the Olympic Park venue yeah. that provides a lot of support and works a lot with the broadcast industry. So we have this, um, this great asset in the BT Sport studio, and we actually are willing to let other people use it too. In fact, we want other people to use it too. So for ITV's Brexit debate, they did it there. On BBC Two, when they do the NFL show, they do it there, for example. I don't subscribe to the whole peak TV theory and the theory that somehow there's a finite resource of broadcasting talent in the UK and people that can write interesting dramas. One of my friends is a playwright and um, his view is that this city is awash with talent who are writing amazing dramas, and I really agree with that. So you'll be commissioning? I think people will see a lot more of BT and drama in the year ahead, and this will be interesting for us because we haven't had that to this point. I'm kind of a little bit on the fence. I'm neither ruling in or ruling out doing more. I'm going to, see, I'm going to be watching very closely the progress that we make in the next year, but inherently, I believe that broadband and TV need each other because the future for both industries absolutely fits together. BT TV is football. Yeah. So, for example, I would never think about you as a provider of, you know, brand new drama. What you're saying is right, essentially, that the drama is a slightly high-risk game because if you talk to people who are in this and who really know about it, there's a hit rate and it's certainly not one for one. Whereas many uh, sort of pay TV companies don't like Netflix and are afraid of it, um, we welcome Netflix onto our set-top boxes. We'll talk now about customer service, yeah. which is not BT's strong point. And this is your area of responsibility, isn't it? It is, yes. Um, Daily Mail's wooden spoon or something? Yes, I've won it You've a won couple it of times. Three years in a row? Not in a row, not consecutively. <laughs> Um, or they would probably have named it after me. We have had some ground to make up here. I came into a business where a lot of the customer service had been outsourced to India. That was done because a unionised workforce would not be prepared to work evenings and weekends. So we had quite a, a frankly, almost unworkable position where you had really complicated systems. The work was done in India. It's really disastrous if you're trying to run a call centre. It's really difficult because People move jobs every few months. I'm trained as a sales agent, and I could not place an order without making mistakes. I just found it too hard. The systems were too hard. So I got the company to invest in the website um, to make 
and the website, the system that we use in the call centres. And that has the benefit that, first of all, if things go wrong on a website, no one hears you when you scream. If things go wrong in a call centre, they tell you when it's wrong. And so you, you get a better website for that reason. And we did that on sales, but we never did it on service. And so what I've been doing for the last few years is getting a company to spend proper money building out a version of the website that can do service, which makes it easy to do service instead of complex. We've been hiring um, thousands of people in the last 18 months. We actually can't hire them fast enough. I've had to open a call centre in Dublin because I couldn't hire good enough people quickly enough in the UK. Um, so you've now got 24 call centres in the UK. Yep. Um, 11,000 people are doing customer service. Yep. Do you have any overseas still? Um, we still do have some. I've made a public commitment that, and that we'll answer 90% of calls in the UK by the end of the spring. So I still have some overseas, but I know what my customers want, and a lot of them want to have their calls answered here. First of all, a big thank you to John. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.